This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader of online cybersecurity education. Join more than 10,000 professionals from over 120 countries to learn security online. I am Damien from Pentester Academy TV, and I want to welcome you to another episode of The Toolbox, where we showcase the latest and greatest open source tools. Add them to your tool collection today. Let's take a look at PC by Alexandra. Hi, my name is Alexandra in the internet. I'm also known as Sasha Rezada. Uh, I'm originally a software engineer. I worked several years as a programmer, but now I work uh, as a malware analyst and technical blogger at Malwarebytes. Yet, I still love to code. So I spend my free time creating a variety of projects. Some of them are open source and available on my GitHub. And today I'm here to describe you one of my projects, and uh, that is um, created especially for malware analysts, um, malware uh, hunters and incident responders. And its name is PSIF. PSIF has been created um, at the end of 2017, beginning of 2018. So it has grown quite a lot through all those years. Uh, it's a lightweight process scanner allowing to detect and extract um, various suspicious artifacts from the process's memory. It can be also used for malware unpacking. Uh, PSIF recognizes and dumps a variety of implants within the scan target, such as replaced injected PEs, shellcodes, hooks, and other in-memory patches. So this is the agenda and that I prepared for today's meeting. Uh, I will start from a quick recap. For those of you who uh, don't know, what do I mean when I say code implants? Um, then I will introduce a PEC. After that, I will go into more details of its capabilities and use cases. And finally, I will demonstrate how it works um, on some real life demos that I prepared for. So, let me start um, by a quick recap. What are the code implants and in memory patches? So, what is the material that PEC can detect? So, uh, as most of you know, um, in Windows operating system, um, Natively, executables uh, are in PE format. Um, so, uh, when we run the PE file, uh, Windows creates a process. Uh, and uh, this original PE file will be loaded to the memory. Um, but while on the disk it is in the raw format, when it is loaded, it's in a virtual format, so it's different. Uh, and not only this PE, but also other PEs that are um, the DLLs uh, from which this file imports something, so all the dependencies. And process encapsulates um, basically all the things that executable needs for, um, for running. Uh, so there are also other structures uh, included and to learn more about it, I recommend you to read uh, Windows internals because this topic is too long for this short uh, presentation. And now let me tell you what are the code implants then. So um, any code that was added to the original process um, is an implant. It can be a PE, such as DLL or EXE, or a shellcode. And uh, as I said, PC and the textbook code implants or in-memory patches. And those, um, those things can be uh, done for malicious, but as well non-malicious purpose. So as malware analysts, we often encounter process impersonation where a full PE is replaced or implanted. So, as you saw on this small diagram and that I prepared, when process is originally run, the PE will be mapped into memory, but sometimes malware can 
uh, unmap this PE and replace it with its own or load its own additionally. Um, we will also um, deal with implants when we encounter micro patching and this can be done also for legitimate reasons. Um, for example, compatibility shims and that are applied um, so that the, the older application can be run on the newer system uh, without recompiling the code and without affecting uh, the executable itself. Uh, and micropatching can be also done in order to fix some bugs in the application without recompiling. And dynamic code also can be found in packed executables or any sort of self-modifying executables. And um, there are multiple legitimate packers that can pack or, or protect a ready-made application. For example, UPX is such packer that can uh, shrink big executables to smaller sizes and then they are unpacked in the memory so there is a code that is dynamically added. Also, there are more advanced protectors such as famous Tamida and, and they are mostly used for uh, the protection of intellectual property which is the code um, and with, they are used also with some sort of licensing systems of the applications. So uh, Tamida is a protector that um, makes reverse engineering more difficult but also on the way it virtualizes code and makes some elements to unpack in memory and um, also the, the, the code will be modified in during the execution. Uh, we also encounter uh, code implants when um, we encounter when we encounter hooking and hooking uh, can be done of course for malicious purposes such as user land root kits, data interception this is often done by malware but hooking can be also done by sandboxes and by anti-malware applications so the API is hooked just to monitor execution and just to check if the functions that were called does not indicate some um, malicious activities. But of course, as a malware analyst, I was the most interested in those um, malicious implants. So I needed a fast way of extracting the code implants from the process so that I can examine it further. And um, there were various applications that uh, allow to detect some indicators, for example, GMAR, which detects uh, rootkits and hooking. And there is also an app named PE Detector, which detects RAM PE, um, also known as process following, a popular um, impersonation technique. And there are volatility plugins, for example, MalFind, which work on memory dumps. Um, but still, they were not the best fit to my workflow. First of all, they don't automate collecting material for analysis. Some of them just, just show them, but uh, show that there is something modified, but they don't dump it. Uh, some of them detect only the most popular variants of the implants, so they are not robust enough to analyze new types of model. And this is where I started creating my own tools, which evolved and become PC. So as you can see on this um, photo that I have chosen, there is a sieve that helps um, sieving out the gold from the river. So for malware analysts, such gold are those malicious artifacts. So let me tell you a few words about PCIF characteristics. First of all, it works on a live system. Its focus is speed and simplicity of use. And the scan that it performs is fully passive. It does not hook any APIs. And this is good because 
malware may sometimes check if some APIs were hooked and it will alter its behavior based on this. So by passive scan, we are not at all interfering uh, with uh, the scan process. Thanks to this also, a PC can be used post-infection. So even if we don't know how the implant was installed, PC will still detect it by finding some particular artifacts. Last but not least, it generates a material ready to be analyzed. So it does not only the detection, but gives precise details. And it's free and open source available on my GitHub. So anyone can use it. This is the interface. PC has a command line interface, which through the years uh, evolved. Uh, but uh, since the very beginning, there is one parameter that is required, and this is speed. Um, so just process ID of the target um, that we want to scan. And there are various filters. This list of filters is increasing. So uh, in order to um, check all those options, I recommend you to visit Projects Wiki and everything is documented there uh, with examples. And this is how we can illustrate how PC works on a high level. First, we notice a process and that we want to scan, for example, we may suspect that this process contains some implants. So we provide the feed to PEC. PEC scans it, uh, and in case of a situation where the implants were detected, PEC will create a directory where it dumps the implants and also dumps the report detailing on where the implant was found and what indicators um, has been matched, pointing out that it's malicious. And from the very beginning, I made a PC in such a way that it can be easily integrated in other tools. So the PC is just a lightweight component and you can build on the top of it. And I already started building, so I created some other tools I call them PC tools family. And for example, there is Mal Unpack, and it's a tool optimized for malware unpacking. It has very similar interface, but in addition to the features typical for PC, it has some more features um, that are specific to this particular task. And there is also Holos Hunter, uh, and this tool is optimized for detection of suspicious processes. So you can scan not only a single process with the help of it, but a full system and search which process has some implants. And it also has more filters than this. So I also recommend you to check it out. Um, other researchers also started um, integrating PC in their tools and if you would like to do it, you are most welcome. Maybe those examples will inspire you. So, Loki Scanner uses PC under the hood uh, to detect also which processes would, be, um, would have implants. And there is TK and K Scanner um, dedicated for malware unpacking and quick identification of, of the samples. Now I will tell you more details about capabilities and use cases and maybe it will answer the question how PSLIF can help you. Uh, as I said PC can do malware unpacking but it goes beyond this. Uh, first of all it can find what the implanted code is it can also reconstruct the corrupt uh, parts of the payload because uh, malware authors know very well but that researchers will be trying to dump their payloads and some of them try to 
uh, protect themselves from it and making our lives more difficult by corrupting the others and somehow obfuscating those artifacts. So, uh, PCF is designed in this way that it still uh, can uh, reconstruct the full key, uh, even if it is corrupt. Of course, not in each and every case, but in quite many cases. Um, this also is related with, um, with dumping. Uh, the dump PE is automatically converted into the raw format. So thanks to this, we can um, directly load it um, into other typical tools. Uh, it also points out where the hooks and patches are installed in the memory. So there is a report with all the details which we can follow. So what PC detects? Let's recap. Inline hooks act and self-modifying uh, P files, replaced processes, for example, um, with methods like process hollowing, process doppelganging, and similar methods that sometimes are mix of other known methods. Uh, manually loaded P files, for example, injected with the help of reflective DLL injection and others. And if run with a particular parameter, it can detect also shell codes. So, um, I don't want uh, to have any misconceptions. So, in order to avoid them, um, I also have to explain what PECIF is not. So, it's not an automated anti-malware scanner. It just collects raw material and some indicators, but it does not do automated classification. So, at the conceptual level, it's similar to the map that just it points out uh, what can be interesting, but we need to judge it. A technical person has to review those implants because they may be non-malicious as well. And it's also not a tool for analyzing memory dumps, at least uh, not for now. Uh, it works only on a live system, not like volatility plugins. Now uh, I would like to invite you for the demo time and I hope seeing PC in action you can understand more the concepts that I just explained. So uh, let's begin the demos. There are several demos that I prepared in order to show you how PC works in action. So on this machine, I have PC, the latest version, and also some PC based tools such as Holes Hunter and Malan Pack. And I also have several samples on which I will demonstrate its capabilities. So let's start from some basic example. Uh, here I have two um, applications that are non-malicious and that they are both packed uh, with the helpful techniques that are commonly used by malware for process impersonation. Uh, one is using, in fact, using RAMPE technique, which is also known as process hollowing, and the other is packed using process doppelganging. So let me start first of them. As we can see, the injector shows that uh, Windows CAG has been impersonated and a payload has been injected there. So this is the injected payload and we can see that it is seen as, it, it runs as a Windows card. So let me now start PC. And we will scan this application. The PID is 2572. So yeah, the application got scanned and PEC created a directory uh, process 2572 where it dumped uh, the extracted implant. If we run the implant, we can see that this is exactly the injected application. And now if we run it as standalone, we see that it's no longer 
impersonating a calf because we just extracted the payload and it's a different PE inside the calf. So I will now run another application. This time it's Mimikatz, but it's running under the cover of Microsoft Notepad. Again, I will scan this process with PC and we will see that this process will get extracted and this original PE. Uh, 1932. And we got another directory where the Mimikatz got dumped. And again, now we can see that it's no longer runs under the cover of, of not, but now it's just plain Mimikatz extracted from that infected process. So, okay, we I demonstrated how it can be done with the help of PEC. Um, but now let me show you how to do the same thing with the help of Holos Hunter. Let's say we know that there is some infected process in the system, but we don't know which one it is. So we cannot point directly by the feed. And for this purpose, I can run Holos Hunter. First, I will run it just with, with question mark, without any arguments, so that we can see, we can list all the possible parameters that it can take. We can apply various filters, but this time I'm not going to apply any filter. I will just add one parameter here, which sets a root directory for the output. So I will set the directory dumps one, dumps one, and let's scan the full system, uh, all the accessible processes with hollow sample. And we can see that total suspicious are two. So let's see what is inside dump one. And yes, there are exactly those two processes detected. So as as you can see, uh, those techniques of impersonation cannot hide the real payload uh, from the PEC. But for sure you are curious how it works on a real malware. So I'm gonna delete those dots and let me start some real malware that I prepared for you. I have those things here. And those things is a banking trojan based on the code of famous uh, those uh, trojan. So uh, we can expect that it will be not only impersonating the, the process, but also hooking some APIs. But let's, let's begin by scanning the full system with Holos Hunter again, just to make sure that the system is clean. So now you can see I closed the previous two processes. Nothing is uh, now. Nothing is running. Nothing suspicious is running. As zero processes uh, are detected. Okay, so let's start the sample of those things. Let's give it the time to unpack itself and inject into the target processes. So it created two instances of Explorer. Those are the processes that it impersonates. Although, yeah, the presence of three instances of Explorer can be need to be suspicious. And here is yet another one. Okay, I think it did all what it was supposed to. The system already got infected. 
So now I will scan and the, the full system again and dump the payloads into the directory dumps too. And we can see those three processes got indeed detected. Let's go to the directory and see what is inside. And I will check them using either. Okay. So there are two samples. Two payloads inside one process. Here is yet another instance of the same implant as here. We can guess it up by checking the details. Here is yet another instance of this implant. And the sample, yet another implant in Explorer etc. At this time this implant is additionally packed with UPX and yes um, by the um, because of the fact that uh, samples packed with UPX have don't keep the original tank only one tank um, after the imports are loaded the names are automatically erased and of course uh, we would like to have them mm -hmm. so EEC can also provide an erasing of the imports there is an option here which can be run with, with different values um, let's run it with um, with option A that auto detects the most suitable mode of import recovery. Okay, let's reload it. And as we can see this time, he received reco recovered this import table. I think it revealed that it's even fully. I set it to auto detect, so it's revealed that it's fully. Uh, we could also use the option unerased, which is a bit different. Um, it will not rebuild from the scratch, it will only um, unerase the erased parts. Let's uh, reload this sample again. Yeah. This time we have, we have just simply unerased import names so okay we managed to unpack those implants also what i wanted to show is that inside those directories there are always reports which give us details on the dump and on one report is about the scan and another report is about the dump so we can see in the scan report where exactly uh, those implants were found and what were the characteristics and that triggered the detection. So for example, we can see that uh, this implant was detected by few different scans, a mapping scan, header scan and working set scan. And I will explain what does it mean later. Anyways, we have those implants dumped now. We could analyze them in IDA because we have we have now direct access to the to the code of the implant. It's no longer uh, protected by the packer. Uh, but I can suspect that not only implants are injected, but there are also some hooks installed and this is a difference between PSIF and Holos Hunter that PSIF detects 
books by and other factors, of course, which are also treated the same. So PE safe detects hooks by default. And in case of Follows Hunter, we need to enable this, this detection by uh, yet another option hooks. And why is it like this? It's because um, I just wanted to make it less noisy due to the fact that Follows Hunter scans full system, not only it's not directed at one process, but it can scan all. Um, if this option would be uh, enabled by default, it could create too much noise. Because, for example, if we have some .NET applications, and they use just-in-time code, um, just-in-time compiled code. So, mm, just this, and this code uh, generated by them is dynamic and also some of the DLLs uh, are hooked and patched. So, having option hooks enabled will just get triggered at them and we want to avoid uh, having um, too much noise. So, and well, there are also um, some compatibility shifts if we run, for example, an old application on new Windows and the operating system might apply a shim and the shim will also cause some patches to be installed in the application. And that's why the default follows Hunter uh, scan um, is um, made in a way that it will get triggered um, only on um, replaced or um, implanted PEs but hooks we have to enable manually. So at this moment, I'm gonna enable hooks. And yeah, as I said, it got triggered uh, at one .NET application. So, there is also a way to filter it out by changing .NET policy. Uh, we can change it by using a uh, switch DNet. And with question mark, we will see all the possible options. So, I will use DNet 3. Now only our malware is detected, so it's good. We can search what was put here. And indeed, there is a lot of stuff put. Now in the report, we can also see yet another label, code scan, and the number of patches that the code scan formed. So there are several DLLs that are patched and we will look inside inside them. Uh, functions like close socket and WSA send and send are hooked, which we can associate with the fact that banking trojans redirect some of the APIs to their proxy so that they can they can steal the data. And here in user 32 DLL, we can see full list of DLL, full list of functions hooked. Some functions also look familiar to me, for example. Um, Zeus does a screenshot on click. So that's why um, functions like get cursor false is hooked. And of course, it's redirected to this implant so on, on the click the execution will go to malware and malware will create a screenshot and the screenshot will be later sent to the cnc so by looking at what is hooked we can see some patterns for example here the function uh, that imports 
uh, certificate is also cooked and it's because this is also typical for banking programs that they install their own certificates and um, redirect the traffic to the proxy using those fake certificates. But I want to show you yet another thing. These tag files are not only you, they can be used as a text file as well, but I think the most, more interesting part is that they can be loaded to various analysis tools. For example, uh, another tool of mine, eBird, supports them by default. So we can just load it to Piver and browse through those tags. So every patch, uh, we can see its original context. Um, we can see what code was before, what code is after, and it helps to understand the full flow better and how the um, malware affected the original flow, where, we, where it will go next. We can also see the RDA in this dump malware sample so we can we can reconstruct this flow very easily we can see that okay it goes to send then it goes to malware implant at rda 15 f10 So it goes here to another function and of course analyzing it fully would take too much time so I leave it as an exercise for you and we will move to another example just before I move I'm gonna kill those processes and it can be done by Holox Hunter with the option kill of course if malware has some persistence and uh, the same sample will be executed at system restart so it's not enough to really disinfect the system but for now it's good enough we will just kill those processes and as you can see the malware is no longer running I will scan the system once again and it is clean so we can move to yet another example and this time I would like to present you yet another tool which I didn't show yet and I mentioned briefly about it so this is Malanpak Malanpak has a PE seed inside as an engine but yet it has different set of options it can take an X as a parameter, so the, the path to the X that we want to run, and the timeout. So after the timeout finished, and the original sample will be killed, no matter if we got impacts or not. And for this, I will use... Okay, let's use first Kubot. So being malware analysts, often we have to start our work from unpacking the sample because usually malware comes packed. So the outer layer uh, is used only for evasion and it does not contain the malicious code. Um, so the first step is just to get the payload um, and malunpack can do this for us. I will use the cool as an exa and timeout. Let it be very small, it is in milliseconds. We can see the report, and yes, it worked. The cool got unpacked. So, Malanpack created a directory with the same name as the original sample that was unpacked. And inside we have the payload, even two payloads, because sometimes it happens that 
there is a chain of loading so we have the second stage loader and finally the payload and probably this is similar here we have also a list of imports from one and the other counters this was an easy case but I have here yet another sample that is yet more interesting so sometime in the past um, me and Mark Collective have presented funky malware formats so uh, we analyzed some cases in which uh, the malware didn't really come as a PE file but it come in some custom format with different headers or in with the header that only partially resembles a PE file and the example of such file uh, of, of such uh, funky malware is cozy which instead of using PE file and loading um, loading manually a PE file like most of the malware does it was using a file in the custom format PX which was like a reduced a portable executable so it had some elements of the P header but not all and for example um, the import table was also custom uh, it was different than in case of original P and here I want to present you that even in such cases where PE header is somehow mm, destroyed or incomplete or even mm, uh, uh, customized and, and uh, minimized still if there are some artifacts uh, PEC can uh, reconstruct the rest of the PE header basing on those artifacts and thanks to this uh, the dumped uh, payload can be loaded by typical tools such as IDA without any problems without any external uh, tools um, that uh, that would uh, parse uh, this custom header and rewrite it uh, PC will just do it in a generic way of course it does not work in each and every cases but it works in quite many cases and it's very helpful so let me start now let me try to unpack Cozy with Malunpack. Let's say we will leave the timeout as is. Sometimes we will need longer timeout, but this time I think it's sufficient. Cozy. And let it go. And let's see in our log. And Cozy got unpacked too. And we have it here. So this was also a case where not only one payload was unpacked, but there was a chain of loading. So there was a second stage um, a loader. And finally, here we have the final payload. So this PE header that we can see is fully recreated with by PEC basing on the artifacts and the import table is also fully rebuilt from the scratch uh, by PEC because it was in different form in the memory. The only thing that PC was not able to recreate was the entry point and at which the execution started because uh, just there is no artifact that can um, let PC um, guess what was the entry point. Also, relocation table could not be reconstructed, but we have the most important elements that can let us still analyze this malware entry point we can find in a later manual 
we have code that we can analyze further and maybe i will show you very briefly how we can open it in ida it was so we have here the body we can we can they compile it because everything got everything got reconstructed very well of course i'm not gonna analyze it right now because it would take too much time but i just wanted to show you that um pc can help you even in such situation where uh, the, the payload has been either erased or changed so it's not just a damper it's it's more than this so this is all for the demos thank you and let's move to the next now as a bonus for those of you who are curious i will show some pc implementation details uh, so we will get a hint of how pc do what it does uh, first of all no impersonation technique is perfect they all leave some suspicious artifacts so what pc does is basically finding and following those artifacts so it see what was modified see how the code area was mapped and so on uh, and pc uh, contains um, various um, scanners inside um, one of them is doing for example header scan and um, during the header scan we load the p file from the disk and this must be of course the p file from which um, the original process was supposed to be created so this um, PE is getting mapped and then the headers are compared with the PE that is in fact in the process. Uh, so when it works, it works for all the techniques that rely on connecting the implanted PE to the pad. So um, when the PE is replaced, for example, fall or followed uh, also it covers process double drinking and here is the small example how um, we can even notice sometimes those artifacts by ourselves when we um, open the process and via process hacker and view the image uh, that was mapped and then we open the corresponding file on the disk and, and take a look at the header and if we see the mismatch, sometimes even by visual patterns, uh, it can be detected. And now we are sure that this PE has been replaced. Uh, then there is another scanner in PC that do code scan. And uh, yeah, the, as, as I said, the PE from the disk corresponding to the module within the process is loaded. And, uh, we detect all the sections that contain code that are supposed to contain code um, and relocate those sections to the same basis as um, the PE in the process was loaded so that we can compare this code um, and detect eventual hooks and patches so this is how it looks for example, um, by comparing the map, um, the, uh, by comparing the PE in the memory with the PE on the disk, we can detect that there are 
this much as had some particular offsets and after that um, we see process those mismatching bytes further and parses them and detects what is the function that has been hooked and where the hook leads to. And there is also a working set scan um, because sometimes if the implant is not connected to the pad, so it does not have any corresponding PE on the disk. It just is a standalone PE injected somewhere in the um, in the private um, memory of the PE, or not necessarily private, but in any memory area that does not have any corresponding PE. So we have to walk to those regions and check if they contain also some suspicious artifacts or uh, if there is, for example, a PE uh, with suspicious mapping type. Mm. This part is a bit complex and will, well, it, it requires uh, various filters to analyze it, but some cases are uh, very uh, easy to detect, for example, if we see that the process has a WX memory region and inside this memory region there is a PE. We may very easily guess that this is not a legitimately mapped PE but just a coding plant. And this is just a basic example but um, there are very few artifacts like this which we can find during the working set scan. So, let me now make a small summary to just recap what uh, we learned. Uh, what are the takeaways from this presentation? Uh, so, PC detects anomalies, uh, it can dump payloads from the memory, and it can reconstruct corrupt payload. Um, and to learn more about it, you can always um, first of all, you can reach the wiki that is on the GitHub and if you have any questions, you can also uh, reach me out on Twitter and I will answer all the questions. So this is all what I have for today and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Alessandra. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation and demo that you presented earlier. You know, uh, before we wrap up the whole session, I do have one question for you. Um, you know, being a two author, you create PEC for quite uh, quite some time. You know, is there is there something that you want to add into the tool? You you want a community to to aid you to contribute into the tool? You know like special features and stuff? Is there something that desire that you want? Uh, well, I have some more ideas that I want to add to the tool. Uh, but of course, anyone is welcome to share uh, their ideas too. And I'm trying always to respond quickly um, on any requests. Uh, for sure, I want to increase the capabilities of detecting malicious implants uh, to yet other things that can be injected into the process. For example, currently I don't have the detection of a classic DLL injection just because the classic DLL injection uh, where you create a thread, um, you know how it works, you create a thread where you call a load library with, with the injected path to the library. So if you load library by this way, it, it and just does not leave the same artifacts as the library or, or any PE that you load manually by some kind of technique of, of impersonation. So it's too, too, it looks too similar to the libraries that are loaded just normally by the process. That's why it's a bit tricky to detect it. However, I have an idea and I will be experimenting soon with it. Of course, as the time uh, with my work allows it, and I think I will have it covered soon. But of course, anyone who who noticed that there is some 
other uh, injection technique that is not covered yet is welcome to um, to share and to create a GitHub issue for me and I'm gonna handle it and look inside. And of course, if you want to add your own code, you are welcome to. Yeah, you know, thank you, Alexandra, you know, by speaking your dream and your add-on and do hope that, you know, the community reciprocate to 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 your thoughts and continue to build on on your tools and make it even uh, more wonderful or awesome, I will have to say. Uh, and we are, uh, you know, on behalf of Pentester Academy TV, uh, I want to thank you once again for coming on board to this episode of The Toolbox and uh, we do look forward to other tools that you create in the future. Thank you so much, Alexandra. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, Alexandra, once again for coming on board to this episode of The Toolbox. For more information on this tool, do see our description box below. Subscribe to our channel and stay tuned to the next episode of The Toolbox.